Good morning. Today it's the third unit poem All the World's a Stage by William Shakespeare. I think you've uh, gone through his poem in your previous classes. So Shakespeare is one of the greatest writer in English language, an important figure in the English language. He has written 154 sonnets, poems, and then 39 plays, dramas, historical drama, comedy plays, Romeo and Juliet. And then Julius Caesar, historical play. So there are many plays even till date they are often quoted, they are often remembered. these plays and this poet shakespeare is the most quoted poet his lines are used by common men it's so easy it's so common to the people his poem lines and also he has contributed a lot to english language he has coined new words phrases english has become so rich only because of these contributions of great people and shakespeare plays an important part in that and he is called the england's national poet bard of avon so there are lots of things to say about shakespeare because when you study english language you have to study Shakespeare without Shakespeare there's no English at all and coming to the play this poem for you is actually from a drama as you like it it is a comedy play and this poem the prescribed poem for you is once again a monologue the first poem castle i told you it is a monologue and this also is a monologue spoken by one of the duke's ministers jacques he is a minister and he is talking to himself talking aloud that is what this poem is now this poem jacques talks about the world being a stage he compares the world to a stage it is a theater where you can watch a drama so that world is a stage and the men and women in this world they are the actors they play different roles each has different roles to play he says that there are seven acts seven scenes each plays seven parts what are the parts that is what this poem is about now coming to the poem all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players they have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts his acts being seven ages so here he says the world is compared to a stage the world is a stage where a drama is enacted you remember our uh, school day function you will have a stage set up and a red color screen will be hung over there and when the program for the first or the programs are over each and every time the curtain comes down and it is open for the next program the next act the next show so just remember that like that stage the whole world is compared to a stage and all the men and women merely players and the men and women in this world we are just players here players means actors we are the actors acting in the drama 
they have their exits and their entrances so each and every person they come into the drama scene they finish their role and then they go away which means each and every person in this world his entrance is his birth he is born into this world that is the way he comes into the world his entrance and once when his act is over his role is over he departs he exits which means dead he is gone so entrance is his birth and death is its exit from the world and one man in his time plays many parts so in between this birth and death he plays different roles different parts his acts being seven ages here shakespeare divides the role of a man the act of a man into seven stages what are the seven stages we'll look at it one by one now the first stage at first the infant mewling and puking in the nurse's arms so the first stage first part played by a man is the infant he comes into this world his entrance is as a baby he is born and at this stage what does he do mewling and puking the child is mewling and puking what do you mean by mewling mewling means a sound made by a cat a noise made by a cat there are different sounds made by different animals for example a cat mews a dog barks a lion roars r o a r s a crow caws c a w s so these are the different sounds made by different animals to communicate the same way the baby is always making feeble weak noise sounds he is crying a way of communication and that sound is just like the sound of a cat that is what the poet says mewling and puking puking means vomiting the child suppose it's hungry it drinks milk it's given milk it drinks it it sleeps and in the meantime some of the food the milk starts to ooze out starts to come out of its mouth it's vomiting so these are the two things always in the stage of the infant one is crying and the other one is vomiting milk in the nurse's arms here the nurse referred to here is not the doctor nurse meaning here the nurse means the one who takes care of the baby a babysitter or its mother which means this baby is always held in anyone's arms either the mother grandmother father babysitter anybody it means it is always carried it is always dependent this is the stage where the baby does not recognize anybody it does not recognize faces little by little it recognizes its mother by the smell and only later on it look into the face and smile that's known to you so this baby at this stage is dependent on others it does not know what is happening around it this is the stage of an infant then the whining school boy with his satchel and shining morning face creeping like snail unwilling to school now this is the second stage the baby has grown up now he is going to school 
and at this stage what does the school boy do whining school boy it's an adjective describing the boy whining means he is unhappy he does not want to go to school he's got homework to do questions to answer responsibilities he is not ready to do that he always wants to play run jump be free that is his state so he is unhappy to go to school with his satchel satchel is his school bag with the school bag and shining morning face a young school boy his face is energetic active it's glowing like a sun beautiful face but still he just want to run out free he doesn't want to go and sit into a classroom he is very sad creeping like snail unwilling to school snail it's a small creature moving very slowly so just like that snail it's creeping moving very very slowly unwilling he is not willing to go he is not ready to go to school so he takes as much as time he likes very very slowly he is walking to his school so at this stage it is a small boy who doesn't want to have any responsibilities he doesn't want to do his homework study sit in a place for a certain time he wants to be free always that is the school boy stage and now we come to the next stage and then the lover sighing like furnace with a woeful ballad made to his mistress eyebrow now this stage the unwilling school boy completes his school and now he is come into his end of the teens here and so he is full of energy imagination and he falls in love and at this period nothing else come to his mind he is always thinking of his lover he always wants to be with her if he is not with her he is just thinking of her and is very sad that she is not there for him and the only other thing he does is writing poems ballads are poems woeful is a melancholy unhappy song that she is being missed he wants her to be with him always and if she is not there he starts writing poems about her her eyebrows her face so this is what he always does in this stage now the next one then a soldier full of strange oaths and bearded like the pard jealous in honor sudden and quick in quarrel seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth so at this stage he is a soldier he is a fighter now the romantic mood the fantasy world that's over now he is a soldier he has got responsibilities he has to do his duty and at this stage he is a man who is full of promises oaths means promises he has got a beard like a leopard and at this stage the young man is jealous in honor he is very staunch he is very loyal he wants to prove his worth he wants to prove his honesty he is adventurous he is ready to take risks sudden and quick in quarrel and at this stage if there is an argument going on he'll keep on arguing suddenly he'll get wild his emotions are high without any thought he'll go into a fight seeking the bubble reputation he wants to earn a name he wants to get a good name he wants to become famous but he doesn't understand that this name or fame is just temporary it is not permanent that is compared to a bubble bubble is air bubbles you when you have a soap solution and you blow air into it you've seen it in the exhibitions and all 
small children blowing air bubbles what happens to that bubbles it just floats for some time big one small one and after a period that little bubbles burst it disappears just like that bubble a temporary joy this one which he is uh, searching for seeking for his name he wants to become famous whatever he is doing he doesn't know that this is temporary nothing is permanent he doesn't understand that but he is so energetic that he is ready to face death also cannon is a, a the uh, weapon used in military just like a gun so he is even ready to die for his country for the sake of his word that is what this period is the fifth stage and then the justice in fair round belly with good cap and lined with eyes severe and beard of formal cut full of wise saws and modern instances and so he plays his part and this stage he is a judge this judge does not mean he is a judge in a court here this stage means he is a respectable person now after the lover he is somewhat restrained he's got duty he's a soldier he's very anxious to prove his worth now he's a little matured he is a person to be respected everyone come to him and want to listen to his experience he's got some experience and only from experience you learn so this is the stage where you have learned some lessons of life that is what this judge means here justice means here and his look how does he look in fair round belly with good cap and lined so belly means stomach usually at this stage uh, when people get about 40 or 50 they don't try to work hard physical activities so they have a fat belly stomach they don't do exercise they always keep sitting talking to with their friends chatting or playing cards such activities so he is always eating uh, rich food getting himself fat with severe eyes eyes severe is he has got a look of wisdom he is not a fun looking man he is very serious and beard of formal cut his facial expression as well as his face also looks very dignified it's not unruly a respected look full of wise saws saws means sayings he's got lot of intelligent things to say wisdom and modern instances he doesn't only talk about the old times at present what is happening he also is ready to talk about that he is ready to give advice to the young people he is sought for that and so he plays his part so this part is a dignified part where he plays a man of respect where he gives advice he is a strict person he has a look of a judge that is this stage now the sixth stage the sixth age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon with spectacles on nose and pouch on side his youthful hose well saved a world too wide for his shrunk shank and his big manly voice turning again toward childish treble pipes and whistles in his sound this stage is the age of an old man lean and slippered pantaloon this refers to the old man after the judge he has gone past his years and now he is an old man and he has become thin his legs his hands he can't walk straightly he has to use a stick sometimes 
pant loons pants loose pants with spectacles on nose he is unable to read or see clearly so he wears a specs always a specs on his nose and pouch on side he is got a pouch is a purse he has got a little pouch in it he keeps money his things he keeps it with him safely his youthful horse well saved youthful is young horse here means pants his once tight pants have now become a world too wide wide means very big the tight pants has now become very big it's very loose now because for his shrunk shank shank is legs here the ankle parts the legs shrunk is the past tense of shrink his legs have become very thin and so his pants are too big for him and his big manly voice turning again towards childish treble pipes his once manly voice the voice of a judge soldier a commanding voice that voice has now become like a childish voice just like a child he is speaking he has lost his manly voice and instead of that manly voice is now become a high pitched voice a loud voice and whistles in his sounds and whenever he tries to speak it just comes out as a whistle because he has lost his teeth some of his teeth have gone so instead of the words coming out clearly is just the air coming out and it sounds like a whistle this age it is that of an old man he is wearing spectacles and he's got a purse he is very thin and his pants are very loose because of his thin legs and his voice has become just like a child this is the sixth stage now coming to the last stage last scene of all that ends the strange eventful history is second childishness and mere oblivion sans teeth sans eyes sans taste sans everything so this is the last stage he had played all his six parts a memorable life an active life so at this stage at this part what has happened he once again is in his second childishness if it is second you should have a first so the first childhood baby shakespeare here is meaning that life is a full circle you start as a baby and at the end you are just like a baby at this stage you are a second child which means you are just like a baby whatever the infant did dependent on others not recognizing anybody mere oblivion he does not know what is happening around him he forget faces he can't remember people he is very very old he is dependent on others somebody should be there to help him to take him to bed to give him food whatever it is there should be a person to look after him he doesn't know what is happening at all sans teeth he doesn't have teeth all his teeth have gone sans eyes eyesight is lost sans taste food tastes nothing everything is the same for him because his taste buds are dead sans everything all the senses he is just living all the five senses has slowly dimmed and in this stage he is waiting for his death to come and take him away from this world i hope you've understood shakespeare's beautiful description of the life cycle of a man from birth to death i just want you to remember the words 
of the greatest Greek emperor Alexander the Great. He is said to be the most successful military commander. Alexander, at the age of 20, became the king of Macedonia. His ambition was to rule the world. And almost all the countries in the world, from Greece to northwestern India, came under his rule. He was such a powerful king. But at the age of 32, Alexander died of fever. Lying in his sick bed, he called his ministers and ordered them to do something for him. That is, after his death, his coffin, the box where the body is placed, should be carried by the physicians, doctors. They should carry his coffin. That is, to tell the people that nobody in this world can save a person from death. The second one, he wanted his people to keep him in the coffin with his hands outstretched, his empty hands dangling, showing. And this to inform the people that he, Alexander the Great, had everything in the world. Riches, wealth, gold, power, fame. But he is taking nothing with him. He has come into the world empty-handed and is going empty-handed. That is life for you. And for Shakespeare's play, he has told us it is a stage and we are actors. So, whatever role we are playing, we are actors. So, it is important our performance is just the best. We have to give our best performance so that our audience, parents, teachers, well-wishers, they are enjoying our act. They are happy. So, when they are happy, we are happy. And with this happiness spread all over, we will keep on moving to the next stage. That's all in the session. Thank you.